Hey guys, in this video I want to go over the tools section or the first page of the panel. So at the very top you're going to see your luminosity masks up here. And the way that this works is you're going to have lights, darks, and midtones. So you'll have numbers corresponding to how much is selected. So basically you lights 1 is going to give you a very broad selection of the highlights. Light 6 is going to give you a very constricted version of the highlights. So darks 1, for example, would give you a very broad range of the darks or the shadows. And dark 6 would be a lot more constricted to only the darkest shadows. So let's say we do lights 1 and we want to further refine it between lights 1 and lights 2, for example. We could do a lights 1 and then click refine. And then we can just move these sliders over on the levels adjustment and basically alter what is included with this luminosity mask preview. So once we're happy with this, we can apply our luminosity mask preview directly to a layer mask on the layer, or we can apply it as a group with a layer mask, or we can apply it as an adjustment or load it as a selection. And lastly, we can also add or subtract to what's included using the plus or the minus. So let me show you how I would typically use luminosity mask in a few different edits. So for example, in a situation where I have a very high dynamic range scene, you can see that I have exposed for three different shots here. So we have a median exposure, I have my underexposed shot, and I have my overexposed shot. So the overexposed shot has the shadows pretty much intact, but the highlights are going to be very blown out. So the way that we can go about fixing this is blending the highlights back in using a luminosity mask. So the way the luminosity mask work is going to sample the image based off a composite of what's visible. So if we don't want to include our underexposed shot in what is selected, we'll just leave that turned off for right now. And I'm going to make a lights selection. So this is going to be a little too broad, so maybe lights 2 will work a little better. And I can see that the parts in white are going to be revealed to the layer mask that I create. So this works well for me because I want to blend in these highlights that are blown out. So I'm just going to go ahead and group and mask. And I like to group and mask because it applies a layer mask directly to the group. So you can see this mask by clicking show or hide it. And that works on the preview as well. And once you have your layer mask attached to the group, now whatever you drag into that group is only going to be revealed to that mask. So if I drag this underexposed shot into this group, we can see that it masked out everything except for those highlights that we wanted to show through. If I turn that off and on, you can see that we've brought back the highlights. So that's one way if you're wanting to blend your images. So you can always stamp up here. And if for some reason those images didn't line up, you could also just select all your layers and then do the auto align function here and that'll line that up for you. All right, so let's say I want to brighten the shadows in this image. Maybe I will take a darks two and that's too much. So maybe darks three maybe darks four, and then maybe I apply it directly as a curves layer. So the way that this works when you apply it as an adjustment layer is it makes a layer mask on that adjustment layer. So now whatever adjustment you create with that adjustment layer is only going to be revealed through the layer mask. So if I go over here to my curves and I just brighten up the shadows here, you can see it's only affecting the shadows that we targeted with that darks mask. So if I turn that curves layer off and on, you can see it's not affecting the highlights and barely any of the midtones as well. So here's one more example. Let's say maybe I want to darken the highlights a little bit. I could effectively make a selection of the highlights and refine it to where I want. And then I could output that as a curves layer. And then if I drag this down, you can see it's only darkening the highlights now and not affecting the shadows or the midtones. So let's say I want to do some dodging and burning. If I want to make the darks darker, I could do the same thing I just did with a curves layer, or I can make a dark selection and then output it as a dodge and burn layer, maybe soft light. And now whenever I paint on this layer here using black or white, it's going to dodge and burn, but it's going to only be shown through the layer mask that we created with our luminosity mask. So for example, if I start to paint with black, and this is maybe a little bit too strong, I usually dodge and burn at about 20% opacity, 20% flow. You can see that I'm really only affecting the shadows, and if I were to paint over the highlights, it wouldn't affect it at all. But this is really handy if you want to just do dodging or burning specifically on the shadows or on the highlights. So if I turn that off and on, you can see we've just basically darkened the darks. Lastly, you could just apply the mask directly to the layer itself. So if I just want to reveal these highlights from my underexposed layer, for example, I can just apply the mask directly to the layer. And then now the layer is selectively revealed through that layer mask there. And we just only have those highlights from that underexposed layer here visible. 
So that's luminosity mask. And then next up we have color mask. So color mask work the same way. Once you select one, it's only going to show you a preview. It's not the actual mask. And then you have the option to refine it or you can apply it directly as a mask to the current layer or as a group with a mask or as an adjustment. So for example, if I wanted to make some adjustments to the colors blue in this image, I selected this blue mask here. I could output this as a hue and saturation. And then now if I go over to my properties, I can basically change the color of just the blues in the image because it's only being targeted through this layer mask very selectively. So I could change the saturation, you know, I could increase it or decrease it, or I could change the hue if I wanted to. Or for example, let's say I wanted to target the red in this image in the sky. It's gonna have a very small effect because there's not very much red. Let's try yellow. So yellow is targeting kind of some of the greens. So maybe we do the red and let's say that we just wanna increase some of the selection here. We can go ahead and apply this as a curves layer. And then now if I make adjustments here, you can see it's only affecting the reds that we targeted through that color mask. Additionally to the standard color masks here, you can also shift click on red, green, or blue to get an RGB mask or a channel mask. So if you wanted to get a blues channels mask, for example, you just shift click on B and you get the blue channel mask or green channel mask or red channel mask. And this works if you're in RGB mode, which most of the time you probably will be. If you're in CMYK mode, then that would actually work with CMY for the C for the cyan, magenta, and the yellow channels. So another option you have down here is range mask, and this is gonna basically be a shortcut for your color range selection. So you can sample the color that you wanna select and increase the fuzziness to basically include more or exclude more. And once you're happy with your selection, you just click OK, and it's gonna show you it as a preview again, and then you can apply it directly as a mask or group and mask or add it as a selection or adjustment layer. And then lastly, we get this handy color picker tool here that you can just simply just select a color, click OK, and you get this diagram box right here where you can increase or decrease the range of what's included. And once you're happy with whatever type of mask you've created here, you just click done. It shows you it as the preview, and then you can apply it as an adjustment or as a mask. All right, so next up under tools, we have quick actions. So these are gonna be some very helpful actions that you can use in your workflow. So first up, I'll show you how to use stack. So if you have multiple pictures open in different tabs that you want to blend together for like focus stacking or for star trails, or you know maybe you're doing blending, you maybe you did some real estate shots and you wanna take three different open photos and put them on the same layer. All you need to do is open stack and it's gonna give you a warning message first that's gonna tell you it's about to close all the open extra documents. But basically just click yes and it's gonna take all the files, instantly put them into one document as layers and close all the extra ones. So at this point you can do your focus blending or your exposure blending, whatever you need to do. All right, so next up, while we're here, let's go ahead and discuss Focus Blend. So to do your Focus Blend, all you need to do is select all your layers, and I usually unlock the background layer first. So just hold down Shift and select all your layers, and then click Focus Blend, and it's going to go ahead and automatically align the layers for you, and then do the focus stacking as well. So I just skipped through that process because it does take a minute, but now that I zoom in, you can see that we have multiple shots with the focus shifting basically blended thoroughly so that we have a sharp image all the way from the very front all the way up to the very back. So this blends this using layer mask. So once you're done, you could either flatten or you could stamp up. So I'm getting a bit ahead, but basically just hit stamp up to stamp all those layers together visible as one, or just hold down shift and then click flatten to flatten this image now and you have your focus stacked image. Now let's say that you wanted to open up that stack directly into Photoshop. If you had your files in a predetermined folder, all you would do is go to open stack and then click browse and then select your folder here and then select your images. And then once you do this and click open, it's gonna open up these files here as layers in one document. So now you have your document here with all your different layers and you can do the same process here for focus stacking or if you wanted to do the same thing with the star trails action for example under astro you could do that as well all right also under quick actions you have camera raw so this will quickly open up camera raw for you with one click of a button and then we have smart object if you want to convert the layer to a smart object 
and holding down shift will rasterize or reverse that. So again, also when you hold down shift, you see the secondary functions of a button if there are some. Next up, we have fill width. So if you had something selected in the image and you click fill width by default, it's going to pop up with contents foreground color, which would be blue in this case or background color, which would be white, or you could just do black or white or gray. And also if you hold down shift and then click there for content, by default it comes up with content aware. So this is handy if you wanna do some content aware fill on something very quickly. For example, maybe when we wanna get rid of this, I just hold down shift and click content and click okay. And it's gonna do content aware and just fill in that object for us. So actually while I have the selection active, let's talk about this button here. So this is going to show you in red whenever you have an active selection. And you can click it to deselect and click it to reselect. So clicking deselect will get rid of your selection. And then clicking it again will just reselect the previous selection here. So another handy feature is if you hold down shift, you can actually hide or show the marching ants. So if we hide the marching ants, for example, we still have this selection active. Um, it's just hidden. And we have this red button here to indicate that we still have an active selection. But if we were to paint, for example, here, and I'll just increase this, you can see we're only going to paint where that selection is, even though it's hidden. Um, and we can see what we're doing a lot better because we hid those marching ants. All right, so we also have a button for duplicate. So this just duplicates a layer. And then stamp up, as I just mentioned a minute ago, we'll stamp whatever is visible onto one layer. And then we also have merge, so whatever you have selected and then click merge, it will merge those together. And shift over merge will make flatten, so you can just flatten the entire layers into one really quickly. And then we have invert, so invert is going to invert the colors in a layer by default if there's no layer mask. But if we have a layer mask, then for example, it's going to automatically invert the layer mask. So that's very helpful. And then also if you have a selection, shift and invert is going to invert the selection so that's helpful if you made the wrong selection or you need to invert the selection really quickly for a blend or something like that next up we have group so this is self-explanatory if you select multiple layers click group this is going to group them and then we have clipping mask down here so if you're not familiar with clipping mask if you make an adjustment and then clip it then it's going to clip automatically to the layer below it so this is helpful if you want to make an adjustment to one specific layer, then you can clip an adjustment to that layer and then it only affects that layer. And then clip mask again, we'll just unclip it. So clip to clip it and clip to unclip. And lastly, we have blend if, and I won't do a full tutorial on blend if, but basically if you make adjustments, you can use blend if to selectively target a specific part of the photo to reveal or conceal it from different parts of the photo so maybe i darken this curves layer here and then i use blend if and i just want to take this out of the shadows here i can do so quickly just by using this slider here and i can hold down option or alt to split that up and then make that transition even smoother or you can do the same thing basically with colors and then basically you're just selectively revealing where that adjustment layer or regular layer is revealed through the blend if so if you don't like the effect and you want to clear it out, all you need to do is hold down shift and then click reset LS and that will remove that blend if for you. And then lastly, we have our buttons here, as I mentioned in the introduction, and this is going to be undo and redo. So we can quickly undo different things that we've done, redo them as well. Then we also have a trash can icon on the other side where if you click it once, if there's a layer mask on the layer, it'll delete that first. And then the second click will delete the actual layer. If you don't have a layer mask, then it will just delete the layer. The S here is to save. So you can save your work periodically as you go just by clicking S. Layer mask by default is going to give you a regular layer mask and then shift and layer mask will give you an inverted layer mask. So then we have a curves, pretty self-explanatory. We have a levels. And then lastly, we have the transform tool. So all you do is click the transform and you can quickly resize the layer that you're working with here. So that's pretty much it for the tools panels, guys. Let me know if you have any questions about any of those processes at all and I will get back to you.